This week, I'll show you how to improve your photography by taking pictures at a special time called the Golden Hour. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. This week, we're gonna focus on one of the best ways to improve your scenic and travel photos. In fact, this also works with portrait photography as well. So let's start with our question, and our question this week comes from Lene in Redding, California. I've heard other photographers talk about the magic hour. What is it, and why is it called magic? Well, magic hour is more commonly known as the golden hour, and it's that hour right after sunrise or the hour right before sunset. It's that time of day when the sun is very low on the horizon and so that shadows are really long and the light is very, very directional. The other thing is because the sun is so low on the horizon, that means that the sun's light has to travel through more of the Earth's atmosphere. And when that happens, then the light gets stripped out of all of its blues, or a lot of its blues, and it gives us light that has more reds and yellows. And those reds and yellows make everything look gold and gives us a quality of light where everything just looks, well, it looks more dramatic and glowing and romantic and nostalgic and, well, everything looks more magical. But uh, one thing not to be fooled about, and that is just because it's called the magic hour, doesn't mean that you actually have an hour of this amazing light. The amount of time you have all depends on the time of year and where you live. And technically speaking, golden hour is when the sun is between six degrees above the horizon and six degrees below the horizon. And depending on the time of year, well, that might last a few minutes or it could be a couple of hours. Now to really illustrate how to shoot at the golden hour, I'm gonna head out to the Sonoran Desert and make some pictures of the amazing jumping cholla cactus. Well, I'm out in the middle of the desert outside of Phoenix, Arizona. It's hot, but it's beautiful here. And so what I'm trying to do is get some nice scenic shots of the jumping cholla in the background. Now what we have is we have okay light, but it's really not good. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon right now. And what we really want is the sun behind me is just really gonna get low on the horizon. The sky is gonna be orange purple. And what's gonna happen is all these little pricklies on the side of all the cactus here, well, those are gonna be glowing sort of golden. And that's really what we want. So what I'm doing right now is I'm scouting around trying to find a good location to find some composition because once the sun gets low on the horizon, we only have a very short amount of time to work with. So I'm gonna be zipping around here, figuring out some places to shoot. We'll take some notes, mark those down. And then when the sun gets low, which is gonna be about 6.15, 6.30 around there, I've gotta work really quickly to capture that beautiful golden hour light. What I want to do is I'm shooting with the 14 millimeter lens and I really want to get some nice foreground interest and so to do that I can't shoot from here I really need to get inside of these choya and then there's some nice soror or another cactus back there and we've got just this amazing sun that's going to go down we're gonna have a really nice sunset so what I'm doing is I'm just seeing how close I can get while still trying to make sure I don't get any of these cactus on the ground embedded in my leg because it really hurts and I don't like prying them out so I'm gonna look around here and also, because I'm using a wide angle lens, I can't really tell how far I am away from this cactus, so I've got to be really careful. So I think that's my shot right there. That is beautiful. Yeah, 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 that's it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a tripod, lock this into place because we're so close to golden hour now that I think scouting is about done. We'll let the sun drop uh, and then we'll start shooting and it should look pretty darn good. All right, well, as luck would have it, and this is one of the joys of doing scenic photography, as the sun is getting lower on the horizon, some clouds have blown in, and we hope that those clouds are gonna move out of the way because right now what it's done is it's just killed all of the light, and this light is just totally soft and flat and not at all what we need. And so if that happens, it means we're gonna have to come back out here tomorrow 
and try again, which we really don't want to do because we're on a tight schedule. But that's one of the things that you have to deal with when you're shooting scenic photography. So if that does happen, what I'm going to do is there are all kinds of little cactuses that are in bloom. You can sort of see these here. And so with this nice soft light, those will look really, really nice. So if we see that, that those clouds are going to stay and we get more clouds, what I'll do is I'll just shift my game plan. I'll throw on a lens and I can get really close to those uh, blooms. And we'll try to get some of those and see if we can at least get something out of this shoot. So make sure that you prepare for that when you're out and about. So bring a few different lenses and always have a contingency plan because you can't control the sun and the clouds. You just sort of have to look at the weather map and hope that the weather holds. And I'm hoping that those clouds move out of the way because if they don't, that's going to really stink. <laughs> All right, well, we waited about 20 minutes and luckily it looks like there's a little hole in the clouds and you can see that now all of a sudden we're starting to get that effect that we really want really strong back and side light and these jumping choya are going to start looking amazing here and again about 10 minutes or so. But luckily, hopefully, these clouds are going to hold off and we're going to get some wonderful light. So looks like we have a winner. So I'm going to start shooting to make sure if this is all we get, at least I get something to show for our day here in the desert. All right, as I just said, I'm really working quickly. Now, the thing is, I've got a really tricky exposure because I have such strong backlight, and that's throwing off all the TTL metering. So what I'm doing is I'm shooting in full manual mode, and I'm really focusing in on this uh, choya right here to make sure I don't see any of the sky. I'm zooming in, setting my exposure, and then recomposing. But even that, I'm getting some tricky exposure. So what I'm doing is I'm bracketing my shots. Because I'm stationary here in a tripod, I can do that. And because I'm in manual mode, what I'm doing is I'm changing my shutter speed so I can expose correctly. And then, because I'm getting a little bit underexposed, I'm overexposing by a third, two thirds, full stop, and a full stop plus a third. So I get all kinds of options for post-production. And so if you're working with tricky light that's shifting like this, that's a really good option to make sure you bracket everything you're doing. Well, I was really fortunate that the sun finally came out and peeked underneath the clouds so I could get some of these shots. Well, there's a website that I like to tell you about. It's called goldenhour.com, and I suggest you check it out. It has a calculator that will tell you exactly when golden hour is and how long it will last based on your location and the time of year. Also, make sure you check out the Adorama Learning Center for a bunch of tips and techniques for shooting in the golden hour, as well as every single episode of Digital Photography One-on-One -on -One and other Adorama TV shows. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It's free, and that way you won't miss a single episode. Or if you're like Lene and you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Is it on? Ah! Okay. All right, well. The reason they're called jumping choya is that they break off these chunks of cactus and then if you brush on them, they stick in your legs like this. This is why we have jeans on out here in a hundred and whatever it is, eight. Um, so the problem is this is in my calf in multiple places. So I gotta try to, to get it out. Yeah! Oh, holy shikamaka fudge! That hurts. Oh man, that hurts. Yo, there's one. Ow. Light on it. 
Shut the front door. Ow! Oh, these are all in my calf. Ow! Mama. That one is in there. Ah! Whoa! Sheesh. Yeah, it's that one right there. It's in there. Lucky jeans. Not so lucky. Ah, mother! You can bleep it. That's the one that's in there. Oh, gee whiz, this hurts. Gaga! Ah, oh, holy shoes. Oh, oh, mother. Ah! Oh, there's still some in there. Whew, that really didn't feel pleasant. <laughs> I just pulled out of my leg. You can win this. Write to me, Ed. <laughs> Digital photography one on one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.